universe is talking to me. It's not me though, it's the universe, isn't it? I mean, you know about these things. You know what I'm saying? My Virgo rising is telling me to just... Don't tell people you're Virgo take, rising. Take you and Dylan are both Virgo risings, yeah? Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube, it's your girl Honey. Welcome back people, welcome back and those of you who are new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Honey and I am a British astrologer. Today people, we are going to be talking all about the Gemini moons, okay? This is one of the most requested videos I had on my polls on Instagram, my Instagram stories where I was asking, what moon sign should I do next? Gemini definitely came up as one of the strongest signs to do next. Now, those of you who are interested in finding out what services that I offer, please make sure you guys click the link in the pinned comments below. There's always links in my pinned comments. Make sure you guys check it out. Um, my website is honeysastro.com. I have a podcast available there. I also have downloadable documents that you guys can read and learn from. I have a website packed with information. So make sure you guys check me out. Okay, people. So let's just talk a little bit about what the moon is is the moon is your emotional fulfillment foundation home security roots it's your mother it's your emotions it's how you were raised and gemini is ruled by mercury gemini is in association with the third house mercury is communication and processing information generating ideas the young early years in our lives locally commuting daily routines etc when you think about emotions right think about how we feel and that feeling that is uncontrolled controllable how would you feel if someone broke up with you how would you feel if your best friend just had a baby or how would you feel looking at your own newborn baby how would you feel um about your partner proposing to you do you know what i mean like the things that are supposed to trigger a deep emotion within us is our moon now when we apply mercury to that energy which is gemini gemini has a very hard time processing the emotions because mercury is all about my thoughts my imaginations the things that i have to say so when you look at mercury with the moon or gemini moon so to speak it kind of creates a element of confusion now this stems from a child Heard trauma and let's be real every single sign has traumas in its own way but i find gemini to have a very interesting way about it and i will be using examples especially for my personal private life because i date a lot of gemini's my two ex-boyfriends have gemini moons my current boyfriend is a gemini son and people ask me oh why do you date gemini's and i'm like well i'm a gemini rising honey so yes that's how it goes i'll go more in depth about them as i go through this video so make sure you guys watch it all the way to the end let's talk about the kind of mother that you guys have when you have a gemini moon mum may have had you when she was very young even if she's not very young she may have a, a lot of youth to her she may have made a lot of very silly childish mistakes growing up being your mum remember i was saying before it's not very emotional and it creates a lot of detachment you know from the relation that you have with your mum and this can be relatable if gemini also rules your fourth house or you've got gemini in your tenth house as well that can be in, in terms of both parent or mum or dad but we just find that there's a lot of detachment in in terms of our emotions it's very important when we're looking at when this detachment started you need to look at the house placement of your moon so if you guys pull up your circle chart not the list the circle chart okay and you're using whole house system for this specific thing because this is for annual perfections annual perfections is a time or technique designed to predict particular events in our lives so every year each house represents a different age of our life for example right house one means you are zero to 12 months years old house two is when you're one years old house three is when you are two years old house four when you're three years old and so on and so forth now the reason why it's important to look at the moon house placement when it comes to annual perfections and and also for gemini moon this is where we're finding where the trauma initially started in terms of your family or in terms of your home so for example let's say you have moon positioned in the fourth house take yourself back to being three years old if you can remember and what you'll find is that there's something that is very gemini 
like where you would remember okay, my mum was taken from me or I was taken away from my mum or we moved house and we moved you know into my grandma's house or this is where the detachment had started from your mum from your family now to be fair fourth house moon is a great place for the moon to be anyway you grow up to be more friends with your mum now your mum would have been someone who was very interested in conversations talking teaching you how to read how to talk how to walk from a very very young age and you may have been very advanced you know as a child or as a baby back then because a lot of mum's focus was surrounding you being as advanced as you could intellectually there was an imbalance towards embracing that need to nurture you so that's where we see the, that detachment kind of forming from a young age now as I was saying before the house placement will be the year that this detachment could have happened so there would have been some sort of event that happened at home that will contribute to there being that family detachment and that would be the house that you have Gemini in or the, or the house that you have Cancer in so those years of your life will be the time where you will notice that there is a lot of emotional detachment from your mum so for example my ex-boyfriend he has the Gemini moon in his sixth house so in the sixth house that would make him five years old so at five years old he was taken from his home in the Caribbean and brought to the UK and he wasn't with his mother anymore so do you see what I mean there's a lot of themes like that that tend to happen where you are separated or you're not as close as you were with your mum as you're supposed to be now because of that detached relationship with mum mum would always encourage communication lots of texting calling talking but not and also the focus can be I want to be your friend not displaying more of a authoritative figure within your life and what we find is that Gemini moon people end up being friends with their mum and that completely eradicates that boundary of having the respect for your mum not just because she's your mum but she's also an elder to you and what we find is mum mum isn't the most touchy feely emotional personal influence it's more of a value on encouraging your mindset your intelligence your intellect is where she feels it needs to be and this is where mum has unintentionally taught you guys how to be fiercely emotionally independent and sometimes there can just be that feeling of you know what my mum has let me down so much I can't depend on my mum anymore I can't depend on my family so there's that learnt behaviour now of having to depend on yourself and one thing that I've noticed a lot about Gemini moons third house moons is this is what I call you guys if you hear it anyone at anywhere else you know it came from me first but I call you guys community mums community dads because the third house Gemini energy represents communities your local communities you you guys from a very young age are usually raised by different people think about it if your mum's young or making very young choices decisions whatever a community needs to help raise you it's like what they say what's that term it takes a community to raise a baby you are that baby being raised by aunties uncles cousins babysitters neighbors everybody has taken their position to raise you and this sort of kind of sets you up for also how you handle your relationships or even just being very attached to you know if you're dating them to 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 your child even there's just this need to want to be closer you know to towards children because they know what it feels like to be that child who didn't really have anybody who that they who they could relate to they don't always discriminate when it comes to dating people who, who already have kids they might be happy doing family days out you know going to legoland and having fun with their partner's kids. Now because Gemini is essentially communities, what we do find is that Gemini is, Gemini moons may have been given a bit more freedom as opposed to other moons. You can have moons like a Scorpio moon, you know, for example, where Scorpio, Scorpio's mums are very protective over their kids, you know, their mums like to investigate, cross boundaries, things like that, even a Pisces moon. But when it comes to Gemini moon, because of the unconventional way that, that you guys are raised, there's an element of freedom. When I say freedom, I don't mean like oh you know going clubbing at 14 years old that could very much be you know what we do find here though but there's an element of freedom that you guys have where there isn't that strict parental figure telling you what you can and cannot do and when you think about Gemini energy anyway it's the jack of all trades I want to do everything I want to try everything I'm curious and that's what keeps that youthful playfulness about you guys is that you guys will try every and anything once and this will be relatable especially if you've got Gemini in your 10th house you know as well your your parents may not have encouraged you to do 
one thing your parents may have encouraged you and especially authority figures may have encouraged you to hey you know as long as you've got your books you've got your degrees your qualifications you're educated you're this and you're that you can do anything that you want so as a gemini moon it's notorious where you guys have multiple different interests different things that you like to do i'm a gemini rising so even for me personally i am I completely understand the energy but this is where it becomes problematic gemini yes is very scatty it's mercurial energy so it's not very good at being stable 12th house is taurus in the gemini's chart so taurus is stability and that's where gemini is lacking a lot of the energy is it lacks security or stability and what gemini has to learn to do is it needs to find its way of being stable in life and one thing that i've noticed is stability it comes with routine it comes with having let's say you like to do three different things but you must pick two different things you must try and have some discipline gemini lacks discipline it hates discipline so what happens is if you have two things that you really want to do you go from project a you get bored of that you go to project b you get bored you go back to project a and eventually you'll start to know notice oh you know i'm actually completing something because i'm going back and forth to different projects that i'm continuing with the problem with gemini moon people is that i'm going to start something but never ever finish it you might decide yeah i'm going to be a barber today next week is i'm going to be a perfume maker you know next week after that i'm going to start building or gardening i don't know i'm just trying shit but my point is there's always something new that that they want to do but there's no long-term goals that this gemini moons tend to set and that's what can set you guys up to fail in the long term because this is contributing to the lack of discipline from your parents or from parental figures growing up you have that much freedom to do whatever it is that you want to do which essentially makes it a lot more difficult to find your purpose in life this is not a very emotionally vulnerable moon so there's going to be signs that you know date you guys or are friends with you guys that are going to struggle because th those other people want so much more emotionally from gemini moons gemini moons struggle when it comes to relationships and again i'll go into this once it's the right time but there's a struggle because our emotions is about processing gemini doesn't know how to process the feels it's always thinking it's always talking it's not it's always deflecting from the emotions so it's very easy to not always be friends with people especially as you know young girls you know the girls might feel like it's better to have intellectual um conversation with their friends that are also girls instead of, instead of having very emotional close intimate relations with your girlfriends but you might feel more closer being friends with boys because there's less of an emotional attachment or an effort there do you know what i mean as a woman so when you think about entering into a relationship now and all of this psychological trauma that you have unresolved I remember things can always be resolved over time but it can take several years now relationships are where we where we are supposed to learn so much more about who we are as people eighth house moon Scorpio moon even Leo moon is very emotionally intense and it's almost like they need to be literally under your skin to feel close to you as a Gemini moon it values talking about literally anything you know what's happening outside the weather who did this gossip you know having fun it's a light-hearted moon so when it comes to dealing with your emotions it's a major struggle for gemini moons people have always said oh my god how do you date gemini's gemini's are cheaters because i'm a gemini rising honey that's why it works for me how you don't know i'm the one that's cheating you don't know but people always comment stupid stuff like that but yeah like synastry plays a huge part because a lot of people always wonder you know how can you date gemini this and that and and be happy and content with them now because these people value communication talking to people and they've been around different people and different experiences they are the one of the least judgmental people let me tell you there are things that i am not proud of that I have done that have happened to me over the years and I remember telling one of my ex-boyfriends who was a Gemini moon he didn't give a shit and it was funny because like he could also tell me stuff and we'd laugh about it and we'd make you know each other smile because we don't like Gemini does not like doom and gloom it likes things to be light-hearted fun and it doesn't want you to feel like they are judging you they hate being judged i think everyone hates being judged but especially gemini moon they have a lot of experience surrounding different people so they're and they're also very curious so they always want to know more anyway and the more that you tell them 
the more closer your relationship tends to be over time. These people are notorious for dating people who are younger than them. Settling for youth, dating people. Be and the reason why, remember, Gemini Moon is about detaching from the core to the emotions. And when you date someone who's younger than you, maybe even from a different generation to you even, there's still a need to want to disconnect emotionally. So there's things that you may not relate to with that Gemini Moon, but they don't mind that that keeps them and their partner still at a distance but enough distance for the Gemini moon to still stick around and still like their partner enough on the receiving end for people who aren't used to distance that can feel like does this person really like me though like why are they behaving like this I'm not really sure it can lead them to question the motives of the Gemini moon and this is why a lot of the time people who are already in relationships who are choosing to be celibate who are choosing to remain single Gemini moons are attracted to them because what happens is right if there's someone who you can be distant to it's like oh it's not too intense it's not too too much for me and that's almost a turn on for Gemini moon and what's so crazy is um the generation I think it's the 96 generation the Pluto and Sag generation those of you who are Pluto and Sag Pluto could possibly be opposing your Gemini moon or your friends your partners your sister your brother whoever right and when it comes to oppositions oppositions can contribute to what's happening with other people that is affecting yourself. But oppositions create an imbalance. So you're either going to be more Gemini Moon or more Pluto and Sag. It's just like an imbalanced energy. You can't always create harmony between the two, but that takes experience over the years. But anyway, Gemini Moon, the Pluto in opposition, you are attracting a lot of people towards you who have their own idea, who are very controlling, manipulative, impulsive, disruptive. And what you'll find is all you want is something fun and adventurous light-hearted in your relationships but because of the opposition that's what you're you're attracting the opposite of that and I always say when it comes to challenging aspects like that I personally prefer you guys dating people who are in a different generation to avoid that intensity of Pluto but also with the Pluto opposing your moon it's so important people that you guys are in a position where you are learning from these people because oppositions are there to encourage us to learn about the other sign and the other planet so Pluto Pluto being intensity, you know, transformation changes, um, and also psychology. Like if you've got a very difficult sun, you know, maybe you've got Chiron aspect in your sun, or maybe you've got a South Node conjunct your sun. You know, a sun where you're not able to really see yourself for who you are. Same, same in terms of the aspects. Saturn in Aries, you know, Saturn in the first house. If you have a Gemini moon and Pluto is in opposition, you have to learn so much more about yourself psychologically to become a lot more powerful and in tune with your sense of emotions. People coming into your life and creating all of this intensity, these ups and these downs, they're coming in to show you about emotions and you're supposed to learn to learn, you're supposed to learn to embrace that and understand it. And that's what I'm saying when it comes to Gemini moons, there's so much thinking and processing going on. There's not enough processing the feels. There's not enough emotions. So to date someone like a Gemini moon, you've got to be fun, adventurous, not a very intense person, someone who doesn't apply a lot of pressure. You know, oh, what are we? What are we? That's another thing because Gemini likes freedom. Gemini likes, um, doesn't like to be told what to do or how to go about things. Doesn't like pressure. It likes to also create a friendship. And let's just talk about what these people do as well because Gemini moons are notorious for keeping communication with their ex-partners. They will still have, they will save numbers they will have multiple numbers multiple email addresses they can be very secretive and very manipulative when it comes to hiding secrets from their partners but especially in terms of speaking to an ex they they like the idea that an ex is close by because they create want to create friendships but want to kind of have that person there to speak with remember the moon is our emotions but mercury is here so it's, there's a lot of thinking and talking through my emotions instead of processing my emotions so being friends with people who you were emotionally associated with is their normal. Now Gemini Moon people are usually very smart, very um, intelligent people and this usually stems from mum talking to you a lot. You guys grew up and heard 
people talking in your family all the time talking around you saying things that you shouldn't really be hearing as a child but this is what makes you very advanced because you're learning about adult conversation you're learning how to speak and to communicate about things now for example um you know some some people really struggle when it comes to handling emotional vulnerability and when it comes to gemini moon they are notorious for dismissing their emotions being distracted by how they feel doing a lot of thinking about how they feel that's what contributes to the need for emotional independence now it's important to look to see where mercury sits in your chart the house placement and the sign placement and you will learn significantly about how this person processes their emotions in terms of settling down getting married it's almost like a hit and miss because these people are very young at heart they're youthful they're playful and you know there can be an avoidance towards doing things that take on board responsibility and also discipline so when it comes to relationships if there is too much of a commitment that their spouse is asking from them that can be enough to really push them away now let's talk a little bit about mental health and how it's associated with gemini right the moon is how we process our emotions and gemini is how we think so the moon becomes very confused when he's positioned in gemini he's not really sure if i'm feeling or thinking so what we find is someone is very indecisive about how they feel what they should do or responding to their emotions now a lot of the time gemini moons come from a family or a mum who may have some sort of mental health issue okay or they could have it themselves now mental health is obviously not something to laugh about it's very very serious a very sensitive topic and stuff and this is a trigger warning so please click the x button if this is going to be triggering for you now where there can be a mental health issue is if you have mercury squares right so you have a gemini moon but you happen to have your mercury in virgo for example or you could have your mercury in pisces and it happens to be squaring your moon you know maybe there's a neptune square you know neptune is maybe opposite in sagittarius so that's what i'm saying and even right now neptune is currently transiting through pisces and it's been in pisces since 2011 now i think neptune will be in pisces until 2025 so right now neptune is currently i think it's at the 22nd degree of pisces at this current moment in time so those people who have a gemini moon from the 19th degree all the way up until the 29th degree you guys right now are likely to be affected by some sort of mental health issue mental health could be depression you know it could be schizophrenia for some it just it's just dependent on what it is but when you think about it neptune creates this level of numbness even anxiety is very common with gemini moons you know being very anxious with driving anxious with um, having social anxiety and it makes you feel like i don't feel so fulfilled or i'm not sure how to feel fulfilled neptune is confusion it's illusion disillusionment so it doesn't always quite know how to make the moon feel that fullness feeling and as a gemini moon gemini is loves to learn things it's very curious it likes things to be very light-hearted you it's hard to be light-hearted when it's something that you need to learn to be vulnerable about it's your moon it's your emotion so it's almost twice as hard essentially when neptune is aspecting gemini and also having gemini moon or you may not be doing what you want to do with your life the sun is your soul's purpose right so what you're spiritually here to do and also links us to our career but the moon is the type of environment that we need to be in libra moons need to be around other people you know aries moons need to be around energy gemini moons need to be around information needs to be in an environment where they're always learning where they are able to even teach you know to learn things to to try new things and to keep being stimulated there's a major avoidance of processing the feels because the focus is i need to be mentally connected to something that's going to keep me interested and that's why for gemini moon people it can be a struggle mentally and all it essentially has to learn to really do and again this will probably get easier easier as they get older um is find that balance of understanding my feels right now you know talking or even writing you know writing about how something had made you feel instead of running away from it write about it if you're able to write down the things that you have gone through in terms of trauma and experience how do you feel in that moment it's about processing that allowing yourself to cry you know allowing yourself to to laugh at things allowing yourself to just feel gemini has a hard time doing that and that's why i find the moon being here 
it's one of the most challenging places for the moon to be but it's a process it just takes time for you guys to understand how to work with the energy and also like in relationships like Gemini's can lack a lot of compassion for people you know um people who may have gone through operation or something very traumatic and Gemini moons really struggle with empathizing or um, sympathizing it's like yeah you know I, I feel really bad for you but you feel bad but you're not really showing body language wise how you feel you know we're not really seeing or seeing you respond to someone who really cares and it's not saying that you don't care it's how it's coming across and that's why to a lot of people Gemini can be seen as being a little bit fake or you know uh, two-faced whatever and that's not the case at all i don't believe it is the case anyway but it's confusing because although you're saying one thing you're showing something else and that's why it's about paying a lot more attention to how you are dealing with your emotions if you're going to have close relationships with people you have to do a lot more self-awareness to understand the reasons why you're coming across this way and that's why i always say psychologically go back to your childhood and we'll see where the trauma initially started which has contributed to how you handle relationships now and that's supposed to encourage you to psychologically analyze yourself and how to be better romantically so they hate to discriminate so people that is my video for gemini moons i will see you guys next week i hope you guys have thoroughly enjoyed it and i wish you guys the best take care bye